To have a successful cardigan that fits well, we have to do a bit of planning ahead. Let's do the designing and sizing right now. Now, here's a picture of the sweater that we're making. This is the back of it. Armhole down to the hem. And because the Addy doesn't make for most adult sizes a broad enough piece, this design is done in halves. So we will knit half of the back, the other half of the back, and then do the same for the front. Therefore, each of these needs to be one quarter of the total bust measurement. Not your bust measurement, the bust measurement. The vast majority of us are going to like a cardigan, which is what we're making, with at least four inches of additional room plus your bust. So if you have a 36 bust, probably a 40, even possibly 42. Some people do like it tighter. However, if you don't want to see bra lines and you do want your blouse to lay down underneath the cardigan without bunching up, four inches is a good rule of thumb. The larger a lady is, the more ease she tends to prefer, although there are exceptions. And the converse is also true. Very petite people prefer less ease and need less ease. So let's just say we're going to make a 40-inch cardigan for a woman with a 36 bust. Obviously, that the math is easy. 40 divided into the four pieces means each piece must be 10 inches. But nothing's ever quite that easy. The seam will take up a stitch here and here on each piece. So we need 10 inches plus two stitches. Well, here I'm making a chart of what we would do based on 3.25 stitches per inch, three and one quarter stitches, for an assorted bunch of sizes. If we want to finish to 32, 34, 36, and all the way up to 48, um, which is almost as large as this cardigan can go on an Addy. I think it may go to 50. So let's look at how this chart is working. If I, I, my calculator's off to the right, you can't see it very well, but you'll know I'm over there when you can't see my hand. And I'm doing 50 divided by 4. The answer is 12.5. Now I'm going to multiply that times 3.25. It's still on the calculator, times 3.25. And I get 40.625 stitches. Especially for larger sizes, I would do this, but after 0.5, I would always round up. So we'll call it 41 stitches. And we should be able to get an Addy flat panel that is 41, though probably not much more. Now let's do some of this math and fill in the blanks. For a 40-inch sweater, 10 inches per piece, 10 times... 3.25 stitches per inch is 32 and a half stitches. I would call that 33 because from 0.5 up we round up. Let's do nine and a half, which will make a 38 inch finished bust sweater. 9.5 times 3.25. I got 136 and a half, so plainly I did not put this in correctly. Let's try again. 9.5 times 3.25. 30.875. That would be a 31. 31 stitches to cast on. Although we're not quite finished figuring, so don't go casting on yet. 9 times 3.25. 29.25. This is a smaller size, and we only have 0.25, so we would round down to 29. 8.5 times 3.25 stitches per inch, 27.625. That would definitely be 28. Now, to each of these numbers, 
in this column, which is the stitches that actually are needed for the panel, we need now stitches for the seam. So I made a column that says plus 2 to everybody. And this is easy. We can do it in our heads. 28 plus 2 is 30. 29 plus 2 is 31. And you can see how I'm getting this. 34 plus 2 is 36. All the way down. This final column shows the number of stitches that we will truly cast on per panel for our four segment cardigan. It's not just cardigans. If you were making an adult sweater that pulled over the head and you had a seam front and back, this math would work. But do not say to yourself, well, I didn't get her gauge, but I'm going to use her numbers because after all, 3.5 stitches per inch is not that different. Look what happens. We'll take the largest size. If you cast on the 41 stitches, we're not going to include the seam stitches because we don't want to know how big the panel is with the seam. We want to know how big the panel is functionally and where. Let's divide those 41 stitches that we're using by 3.5 and that'll tell you how big the panel will really be. 11.7 rather than 12.5. Now if we multiply 11.7 times 4, it'll tell us how big the sweater will be. Eek, 46.8, 3.2 inches smaller than we wanted. Now that could be all your ease. You will not like the fit if you cheat. The math is not hard. I know people tend to shy away from it, but please do it. And if you find that you just feel too confused and can't do it, email me and I'll help you do it. I just don't want you to have a miserable time, which we all will, and I know this because I did it early on too, from fudging. People tell me sometimes, oh, well, I don't have time to swatch. And I want to holler, but you have time to make sweaters that don't fit? That doesn't make any sense, my dear. So, don't you do that. Now we have to add a little bit of information so as to know how to do the shaping up here. Let's look at this expansion of the original drawing. And again, we're going to work with an imaginary knitter. This one, this one has decided to cast on 40 stitches and she wants 20 inches of length to her underarm. That won't be including the crocheted edging. So you think about how long you would like it. And measure a sweater or a cardigan that you like, so specifically a cardigan, because this is going to fit over a blouse. Find out how deep is the sleeve here. And that comes up with this number. This is the number our imaginary knitter wants. Nine inches deep. So let's work on these two row count measurements. For my swatch, I got four rows per inch. You need to use the number you got per inch. But I'm going to multiply four times 20. That's easy. It's 80 rows needed here. The big R is for rows. And for this, nine times four. I actually don't need the calculator. 36 rows in the armhole. So we're going to knit to the underarm, bind off or decrease a few stitches, then do some decreasing one stitch at a time, which makes this curvy shape. It's really a diagonal, but it functions as a curve. And then knit straight to the shoulder. Fatima bound off four stitches to begin with. That will work quite well for most now the shoulder width is important. We have very individual ways of preferring things to fit on our shoulders. So again, it would be very helpful for you to measure a garment that sits where you want it to sit. Find out how wide is it. Um, 17 for our fictional knitter. So we want to divide 17 and a half and add two. Why is that? 
no, wait a second. I told you wrong. We, first, we want to multiply 17 times 3.25. That's how many stitches it takes to make 17 inches. But we actually know 1, 2, 3, 4 additional stitches are needed for seaming. So that's 55.25 plus 4. 59. It needs to be an even number, so I'm going to round up to 60. The reason it needs to be an even number is because we need to divide it by 2 in order to get this figure, the number of stitches that should be left on the addy when we get to the top of the shoulder. So 60 divided by 2 is 30. And if we start with 40 stitches, we take away 4 there, we're down to 36 stitches. So that means we need 6 decreases to get to 30. If you started with 40, but you wanted 20 stitches here, and you bound off 4, you would need more decreases. Let's do the math. 40 minus 4 minus the 20 stitches we want left, you need 16 decreases. Fatima did hers every other row. That's a classic shaping technique, and it works very well on the Addy. So that's what I'm going to use for mine, and I suggest you do for yours. So this knitter, we already determined that 40 minus 4 minus 30 leaves 6 stitches to decrease. So in this area, this is how we usually abbreviate this instruction. Decrease 1 every other row, E-R-O, 6 X for times. Okay, continuing with our design. We need to decide on an armhole depth. You've measured a sweater of your own that you like to determine what works for you. And then I'm going to strongly suggest that you choose a depth of 7, 8, or 9 inches. The reason is that the math involved in shaping the armhole and shaping the sleeve is rather complex and I've done it for you at these levels. The other reason is that given the gauge I got, and you're gonna get one close, whether it's identical or not, the sleeves can only be 13.85 inches in circumference, a little under 14 inches. So there's a limit to what we can do about shaping the armhole. We can't make it enormous or eensy-weensy. Now this is going to fit a lot of people, but in order to determine whether it is going to fit you, there is only one thing to do, and that is to make a little bit of a tube, say eight inches of it, and slide it on your upper arm. It's not going to go to your lower arm because we're making a three-quarter sleeve item, but see if you're going to be happy with the fit down your arm of this circumference because there's not much we can do about it with this design. We could change to flat panels and do different things, but that's not what this sweater's about. So if you are happy with it, you will probably be also happy with one of these armhole sizes. When I did the math for the number of decreases for the sleeve, this is what I come up with and we really need them to be an even number. This is 21 to 22 because it was 21.44 needed, right in the middle almost. I'm going to suggest that every time we need to change it to some, another number, we round up. My reason is that I would rather ease my sleeve into the armhole than stretch my armhole to meet my sleeve. The next thing needed is easy as can be. Measure from your underarm to where you want the lower edge of the sweater to fall. Remembering that this isn't the true lower edge, there will also be some crocheting. So our imaginary knitter is going to knit 9 inches from this edge to the underarm. Later she'll add crocheting. And at 4 rounds per inch, she needs 36 of them. Then for all of these sizes, we will remove six stitches onto waist yarn 
at the underarm. And then we'll all do the number of decreases that we've decided on in the chart down here. For a 9-inch armhole, 24, 20 for a 7, 22. And you will see in the video, we'll do that together, how I'm going to do it. And that each decrease that I'm talking about only occurs on one side. So our actual number, if you were saying each side of the sleeve is decreased 10, 11, or 12 times. Then the very last few stitches, in it's 15 in the case of the 9-inch armhole, will be removed onto waste yarn. Personally, I like working from this little chart. That makes sense to me. But not everybody feels the same. If you need to have a written pattern, take the information from up here and transfer it to some crib notes. Cast on 40 stitches. Then we take this number, knit 80 rounds. Mind off four at the underarm. Decrease one every other row six times. Remove on waist yarn at row 116. There's my final row, and I should, there it is. So you can write yourself a little mini pattern with no trouble at all.